Pili Uomo is pretty much like the mecca for menswear because you can learn a lot. Too. Yes. Uh, people are very friendly. That's just true. Our mission mm -hmm. is to promote classic elegance. It means that you can still wear a suit and you can still look cool. Guillaume is doing this with his wife. This woman came like a storm. <laughs> and the pity said, what is this? You know, that's wow. Since a kid, I've watched old Hollywood movies. That was what I grew up doing, so naturally I would gravitate towards the, that type of clothing. Mm. Seeing my husband, and he was like my old Hollywood actor yeah. <laughs> yeah. in real life. So, yeah. so I was like, wow. <laughs> <laughs> and now you living the dream for real. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to this new edition of Sotoyal Talks. Today we have a special guest with us. You, if you live in Europe, you probably know him. If you don't live in Europe or you live in the USA, because a lot of people are watching this show in the United States of America, you may also know him because he was featured in big magazines and big newspaper. But it's a pleasure for us anyway to have our friend Guillaume Bo, hello Guillaume, how do you do? I'm good, I'm good, thank you for having me. Yeah, um, well, uh, Guillaume, as you notice, has a very good uh, American accent, uh, because he has a secret. This guy is French, he's our good friend, but I think you were born on the other side of the Atlantic yeah. Ocean. I was born in Montreal. You were born in Montreal, so are you sp you're speaking a little bit the Quebecois with the accent, or no. not really? We oui, are Siri. Ah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Ah, okay, whatever. It's always, always very um, intriguing for us to see uh, people with this strange accent. On. So, uh, just in a nutshell, if you are interested in classic style and if you are following this sartorial movement or whatever you call it, classic style movement, you may or may not know a very important event which is called Pitti Uomo. Pitti Uomo is a very important event that is taking place in France, Italy, uh, twice a year. Uh, in June and in January for summer season and for winter season. Yep. And this is what I, we wanted to take the time because Guy, uh, Guillaume is, a, is like a figure, an important figure of this um, trade show. And we wanted to have him to explain to you what this, why this, um, this event is important for us and what it is in reality because there's a kind of a mystical, mystic around the Pitti Womo. Mm -hmm. uh, by the way, just make the test. Stop the video, one second, type Pitti Womo on Google and you will see immediately what we are talking about. You may see Guy, actually. Guy, we say Guy because uh, his name on Instagram is Guy Bo, but his real name is Guillaume. And so you may see him and you will immediately grab and understand what you are talking about. But for those who want to go a little bit further, I would like you, Guillaume, to tell us the story. What is Pity Womo? What is this thing where a lot of peacocks from all around the planet are flying <coughs> there to gather and to peacock? all day long and, and with a sense of joy and celebration of classic style. So tell us the story about this um, event. Pity Womo is pretty much like the mecca for menswear. Mm -hmm. uh, so when it comes to menswear in general, like, of course, sartorialism, mm -hmm. sartorial people, you know, like bespoke, made to measure, whatever, you know, like big brands like, I don't know, Chiamat, Atolini, Cuccinelli, all of them, mm -hmm. even Chifonelli, you know, like, but also like sportswear. Mm -hmm. This is why, you know, like uh, nowadays you can meet and find like so many people like coming from so many different countries, Africa, Asia, the US, of course, and of course, Europe too. But uh, yeah, they, they go there to discover, you know, like the trends, to meet people in this business. Mm -hmm because you can meet the best photographers, the best journalists, the best writers, uh, all of that in one place called the Forte Stada Basso in mm -hmm. Florence. Yes, a beautiful place actually. Yeah, yeah Flor historical place. Florence yeah. is so beautiful. Yes. So first, you know, it's, it's the, the, the good thing about that. Yeah. Because we can visit Florence. This is the Renaissance city, ladies oh, and yeah. gentlemen. This is if you've never been to Florence. The only problem is Florence. This is the same problem with Prague and the same problem with all this incredibly beautiful city. There's had an incredible number of tourists. Yeah. Also, <laughs> which yeah. is, and specifically during Pitti Womo. But during Pitti Womo, it's different because the streets are, are literally blossoming with a lot of elegant men, right? Yeah, but summer still, it's, it's very packed. Yeah. This is why I like Pitti winter better. If you want to discover Pitti, mm -hmm. go there during winter. So you say discover. Let me understand well what you just say because... 
I thought that at the beginning, and it was the case until recently, until COVID pretty much, you had to be either a buyer or an exhibitor because it's a professional trade show, mm -hmm. uh, basically, or a journalist or a writer or mm -hmm. a photographer to have access. It was quite difficult to have access to this mecca of men's <laughs> style, as you say. But now the codes are loosening a little bit and now it's open to everybody. Okay, so uh, let's say I'm going to try to explain to you guys what it is all about. Mm -hmm. It's like it's a fair. Mm -hmm. It's a fashion fair with stands, you know, like in different buildings. Yes, booth. Where, yeah, well, like booth. Mm -hmm. Where buyers and journalists, stylists can discover new clothes. Okay. The new collections and well, all that Exactly. Stuff. Yeah. And then, you know, like since 2009, I would say, you have also now, you know, like what we call street style. Yes. And I, I'm sure that people listening to your YouTube channel, they know what we talk about mm -hmm. because they probably see, I don't know, Lino Yeluzzi, yep. Roberto Mararo, mm -hmm. uh, who else? Uh, Squarzi, you mm -hmm. know, yeah, Luca uh, Robinacci, Maggi, yeah, all these people. Know, yeah. And they are like pretty popular. Mm -hmm. So this is why PT Womo became that big too. Mm -hmm. You know, you have outside mm -hmm. people, you know, like with style mm -hmm. and you have inside booth and brands. And mm -hmm. Yeah, what Guillaume is explaining now is that, that it's, a, it's a very interesting that um, it's something that really was probably unplanned by the people by PT Womo. It was a trade True. show and it became something like it's almost, I mean, it's not more interesting outside than inside, but all of a sudden a crowd of well-dressed gentlemen and ladies, by the way, from all around the world, mm -hmm. they decided it was their place. Yeah, it's like catwalks. Exactly, Galore, but outside, outside, in the street. Yeah. And without tickets, without, what do you say, without seats and all these chupsa mm -hmm. of the, the fashion weeks. No, no, it's very... I, I, actually, for us now, it became almost a family reunion. I yep, think we gather too. people mm -hmm. from all around the, the world. And what is interesting is that you have literally two PTs. You have the PT professional one. You can go inside. You can see the trend. You can't buy anything, right? It's not, it's not something that you, you can you can't go there and say, I'm going to buy a suit at PT. No, no, no. it's just for professionals. Mm -hmm. You have to be a professional buyer to buy something. So you have the inside, which is a traditional trade show, and then the outside, who is like... Ah, it's like a, some kind of a moment of gathering of peacocks and gentlemen, and it's a feeling of exhilaration. It's a feeling of, at last, I can meet people who have the same passion as mine, mm -hmm, and I can see how the world could look yeah. if some, a few people will make a little effort. Yep. And this is something that, and this is why I'm very happy to have you, because you are part of this community, and your mission also, as far as I understand, is of course doing your job as a model, as a consultant, as an inspiration for others, but also try to give the new generation maybe some kind of a inspiration and maybe you don't have to dress like everybody. Absolutely. Am I right? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. My mission, our mission, mm -hmm. is to promote classic elegance. Yes. But not too old school, mm -hmm. too dated, you know, to dandyish, yeah, like a modern twist, you know, uh, on classic elegance. Yes, it means that you can still wear a suit and you can still look cool. Mm -hmm. That's my point. Yes, so especially for you guys in America, you know, like you, um, you, you are used to see so many people, you know, like dressed like whatever, mm -hmm. and all of a sudden you see a guy wearing a blazer, a three-piece suit, and he doesn't look too bad. No. You know, Actually, like too, looks too good. much. My and opinion, you're like, yeah. oh my God, yeah. it's very masculine. Mm -hmm. You know, and I'm not talking about power suit, you know, like from the 80s. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's no. another story. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I'm talking about just looking cool mm -hmm. and masculine and, and yeah, and, yeah. and looking your best. Yes, but the thing is that um, precisely the problem is that uh, since a few years, and I don't want to go into some political or sociological or anthropological, because for me it's even at the level of anthropologic. I agree. But the point is that um, what I we've been noticing in America, but it's changing a little bit. It's a little bit on the heartbeat of America, but it's, it's the same in Europe. It's, it's coming is that we live in a culture that has been glorifying comfort. Comfort, yeah. At the expense of style. That oh, yeah. is to say, 
uh, and, and so it is, I'm sorry, but it's specifically true in America, they, this society, and it's not the will of people totally, but they were raised in the idea that comfort is everything. They even s speak about comfort food, which the first time I went to America, it's what crazy. is that yeah, comfort yeah. food? What does it mean, comfort food? Mm -hmm. uh, no, I, good food or bad food, but for comfort food, no, it's a concept I didn't know before marrying my wife, she's American. Your wife is American, too. Yeah. We're going to have her in a few minutes in the show, by the way. Good and, idea. Uh, and so this idea that comfort is paramount at the expense of style, we show, and you show specifically, you, you're well known for that, is that it, it, it's not two opposed ideas. It not can go hand in hand. Yeah. You can be extremely comfortable. Why? At the same time, being extremely elegant. Explain to us your secrets. How do you do that? To be nonchalant and elegant, and well, at the same time, mm. feeling comfortable. It's a lot of work at the beginning. Yeah. Yes? Like everything else. Mm -hmm. It's like a good musician, you know, like classical or jazz musician. Yeah. You have to know the rules, the codes, mm -hmm. and you have to work. And so I've been wearing clothes for, like classic clothes, for 35 years. Okay. So you have to learn that, and then the fabrics, the textures, the colors, and then you do mistakes, and then you do better. You know, like Beckett w used to say, you know, like fail, fail, mm. fail, and then fail better. You mean Beckett, <laughs> Samuel Beckett? Yeah. Okay. Fail, 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 and then fail better. Mm -hmm. well, yeah. Oh, yeah. I yeah, absolutely. That. I didn't yeah. know this quote. Oh, yeah? Yeah. It's, it's used like too often by people, you know, from the big tech. Okay. And, but not the proper way. But this way, you know, it's like rater, rater, et rater mieux. Fail, mm. fail, and fail better. Yeah. I love that. <laughs> yeah, and yeah. we did mistakes. And you and I well, and course. I still, yes. because sometimes we challenge ourselves, we want to try this and that, whatever. Mm. At least you do your best. Yes. And something else, I totally agree with you about comfort. And it's also all about money. Mm -hmm. Money is the key. So if you have money, no matter what, you can look like crap you have the big watch mm -hmm. the ferrari yep. and all that and you still you look like someone i disagree totally with that okay totally okay but you <laughs> mean on the reverse that you don't have to have a big wallet to dress well absolutely not yeah, explain to us that because a lot of people have this misconception you said ah okay you're the sartorialist and blah blah of course you have a big wallet me i'm a, I'm a student or whatever i have my family to take care of yeah I'm, i have my family to take care of and i don't i don't have the wallet explain to us please please it's very important that it's not a matter of money not at all especially nowadays like 30 years just 20 years ago you remember it was very it was, expensive actually yeah nowadays thanks to the web Thanks to small brands, you know, like for example, Suit Supply, mm -hmm. uh, Walker Slater, mm -hmm. uh, who else? Like so many. Yeah, you know, yeah, like, yeah. Boji and well, anywhere. Exactly. The, the entry yeah. line, let's say. Yeah. yeah. You can dress your best yes. for almost nothing. Yeah. When you know that a pair of Nike yeah. can cost like 500 euros, obviously. <laughs> of course. Ugly Balenciaga, you yes. know, like seven. 800, 1,000. Mm. Mm. With that, you can buy two suits. And, and also the vintage shops. Yeah, but this, it was, it, uh, I started with that. Yes, like of, Marc Guyot, our friend, he was uh, yeah. the king of vintage. You were the king yeah. of vintage. You've been thrifting all your oh, life. Oh, yeah, right? of course. Of and course. for that, At we first, have a son. Uh, one of our son, Elliot, he found a suit from Savile Row. Yeah. At Goodwill, mm -hmm. you know Goodwill is the thrifting show in the mm -hmm. US. From the US, you know Goodwill, of course, for twenty bucks. Yeah, <laughs> because I'm sure. nobody knew what it was. Mm -hmm. You know, if you really deep that, it needs, it requires a little bit of effort and time. That's the point. Uh, elegance for me, it's also about culture. Mm -hmm. So it it was all about finding the right spots. I had a spot in New York. I remember twenty years ago called Gentleman Resells. Okay, and I would find you know like. Uh, uh, Back then, Brioni, you know, uh, even Atolini and all that for nothing. Yeah. Even the beginning of Tom Ford and all that. So I would go there. Mm. And, it's, and it's super like cool to, to just to think that you can find this kind of items for nothing. And when you wear them, yeah. you know, you feel like, oh, cool. yeah. you feel a different I look man. Good. Yes. And at the same time, I bought them for nothing. Exactly. Well, and this I is like, a double joy. Absolutely. Yeah. While everybody else, you know, like, they are ready to pay mm. 7000 and, and they still don't look good. Mm -hmm. So it, it was almost like a revenge. Yeah, yeah. You know, coming where I come from, like you, mm. we know the value, you know, of money. Oh, of course, yes. You know, so 
it means a lot. Yeah, my first chief on the suit, I had to save money for a couple of years before buying it <laughs> yeah. because it's just not like easy like that. And on top of that, you will discover more and more that the people who are really into classic style, they are not wasting money. No. This is not our way of thinking. No. The people who are in classic style, they don't buy 300 suit and whatever. No, they're more like, in any case, they like to take their time. Mm -hmm. And culture, you write you everything. So there's a few books, ladies and gentlemen. We're going to put the link. I did a show, we did a show here on this channel about all the classic style books, but Alan Flusser, Bernard Rotzel, myself, and a few, James Sherwood, and a few mm -hmm. others. That is very important to educate yourself because what Guillaume said to us, he said, first learn the rules. Absolutely. It's very important. Yeah. For example, how to, max, to mix, mix the patterns, how to mix the colors. Um, um, classic style, and like dressing well in general, is like a grammar. Yeah, it's the grammar of it's a language. Absolutely. And the grammar, what is the grammar? Is the art of mixing things together, like a verb, a complement, and a subject. It's the same in dressing. You say something with a real const constructed answer, and this is something you, you can't you can't be born like that. You can be born with a sense of with a taste. This is difficult to acquire, but you can learn the rule, and it is open to everybody. Coming back to pity, specifically on yeah. open to everybody. There's something I wanted you to explain to the people is that, okay, well, is this some kind of fashion show where only the people are a little bit OT and a little bit... Not at bit, all. Yeah, Not at all. That's bit. the thing about PD. And the very first time I, I was there, like you, we were quite surprised. Yeah. People are very open-minded mm -hmm. and especially Italians because yes. this is their place, you know, their city, their country, mm -hmm. and they are very welcoming. Yes. Yes. No, this is very surprising. This is very no? important, and nobody's OT. Yeah. Oh. Yes, and, uh, yeah, of course. Uh, go to the Fashion Week in Paris, you're going to see people say, oh, do you have your invitation? Uh, I'm sorry, I forgot. It's not going to be possible. Like this. Yes, exactly. Pity <laughs> Womo is like, you are welcome with open arms. Yeah. And this is something very important, ladies and gentlemen, but it's also, for me, it's like a magnifying glasses of the sartorial community as a whole. Yeah. In our world, uh, despite all, despite the appearances and against all odds, I don't see some bad-minded people. Okay, there's a few guys here and there. Mm. They try to enter this community and then they are basically fired quite quickly. Mm -hmm. But otherwise, the people who are lasting in this world, they have somehow the same kind of way of thinking. Yeah, I, I would say that we are ready all together to manage our egos. Yes. It's that simple. Yeah, it is. Which is pretty rare. Yeah, in, it is. In, in, in this fashion industry. And Pity Womo is like the epicenter of that too. Culturally yes. and socially. It's yeah. very interesting. Yeah, it's not only vanity. That's what no. I'm trying to it say. It can be. Yeah, it no can problem. be. Of course, vanity yeah. is part of this world. <laughs> Ecclesiastes, mm -hmm. vanity, it's, it's mm -hmm. all vanity after all. But it's, you're right, it's more balanced. And on top of that, there's a really warm welcome. So... Let's say I'm American, mm -hmm. I'm interested in men's style, mm -hmm. uh, and I want to experience this thing because it is an experience now. W what would you advise me how to dress, how to behave? Well, how do I do that? The first thing is to get a ticket. Yes. Because no, you, you can buy tickets. Yeah, yeah. online. It's very new. Huh? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, online, like 30 bucks. Mm -hmm. So it's almost nothing for yep. four days. Huh? Yes. So you go online, you buy your ticket, and then. Uh, you try your best to look your best. But if you cannot, the very first time, just go inside. Yes. And study, you know, like new brands, new collections, and look at people, how they dress, because you can find like different tribes, the Scandinavians. We're going to talk about that Korean. just after. Okay, yes, okay. yeah. yeah so, uh, so, yeah, just study, and then, voila, mm -hmm. really, you just need to go there. Mm -hmm. And there's something special about Guillaume, as I do with my beautiful wife, Sonia, mm -hmm. that everybody knows on this channel, of course, is that there. Guillaume is doing this with his wife. And when I, mm -hmm. uh, I, I want to do, we have a little gift for you, is that uh, I'm going to interview, if you may, uh, if you uh, allow me to do that. That I'm going to have please. your wife sitting at your place please. just for a few minutes because yeah, we want to know who she is. She came at pity like a storm and she said, <laughs> wow, this beauty, where she's coming from? And that's Gibo's wife. So it's now for you, ladies and gentlemen. 
So as promised, I'm sitting here with Angelique. Do I pronounce it well? Angelique? That is perfect. Okay, Angelique, she's a model, obviously. <laughs> so it's very interesting for me to, to understand how she feels this kind of classic tile world, because as far as I know, you were more in the fashion world, literally, before. Tell us a little bit about your background. Well, I've been modeling for more than two decades, mm -hmm. so I've run the gamut as far as seeing all kinds of different fashions, whether it's men or women's fashion, that have gone around in the, on the runway, as well as in magazines that I've liked, and a lot that I have not liked so much. Yes. But what I tend to gravitate toward most is the classic style, because mm -hmm. that's my favorite time yes. period as far as men's and women's looks was during the 1920s and 1950s, that period in between there mm. as well. And that's my favorite look for men and women. So you married the right guy for exactly. that. Exactly. Yeah, this is very important. <laughs> so it's very important for us to understand that because you were modeling mainly in the U.S. You were from Los Angeles. Ma originally. Yes, I'm yes. from Los Angeles. Yes. I did model mainly in the U.S., but I also traveled to many other countries as well. Of course, I can I imagine. I stayed in South Africa in Paris as well. I've modeled in different parts of Germany and yeah, pretty yeah. much uh, all over the United States I did. Yeah, and it's interesting that Angelique is telling us that her favorite now is the classic style and because it's always okay to be honest with you, uh, we know Guillaume, her husband, since a long time at Pitti, is a part of the tapestry with us and a few other friends. You know, we are here. We're part of the thing. A, a Pitti woman without Gibo is not a Pitti woman. And uh, this is how it works. Because it's just the fact that we are used to it and people are used to us because it's a kind of a family reunion. And then all of a sudden, a couple of years ago, three years ago, this woman came like a storm. <laughs> and the Pitti said, what is this? You know, that's wow. And we were very happy. You know why? Because it meant something to our community that a woman of your level of modeling will really embrace this feeling of classic style. And when I look at you, you could, for example, today, you could very well be in, an, in a film from the 1930s, you know, and it will be very... So for us, it was like a gift to have you, and also we can f feel a movement. It's still very small, but it's a movement, an ongoing movement uh, among the younger generation of young women who are rediscovering this style. So tell us how it feels, because Pity Womo was unknown for you before you met Guillaume, right? You didn't know about that stuff. I didn't really know about it, and he asked me in 2016 yes. if I wanted to go with him, and I was like, eh. I'm pretty busy with life. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh, yeah. And I didn't really know too much about it. And then when he asked me, it did pique my curiosity. So then I started looking at YouTube to see what I could find and mm -hmm. whatever things I could find online to be able to search and figure out what was going on. And I'm like, what is this thing? Because I have zero <laughs> clue. And why are these guys dressing up? But hey, these guys are looking great that are dressing up. That's amazing to me because mm -hmm. most of the time, of course, and especially in Los Angeles, you see people just in jeans and t-shirts yes. most of the time. That's pretty much the uniform that you usually see. Exactly. And so it was very refreshing to be able to see all these men going and flocking from all over the world to be able to show their greatness in the styles of the yes. different suiting that they would wear. And so mm -hmm. it was very refreshing to be able to see that. And I was like, okay, I think I might go and do that. Yeah. <laughs> so the next uh, year, And I can tell you, I you made it very well, <laughs> to be honest, because it's not, it's not that easy. Because, you know, in, the, in this classic style for women, you have, I would say, two different trends. You have the trends of, like my wife, she loves to dress up with tweed and with, mm -hmm. you know, double-breasted vest, which is, people say, why does she dress like a man? People who don't know, she doesn't dress like a man, she's dressing in tailored clothes. This is exactly. a very different concept. Exactly. And then you have the second trend, we are, probably you are the most spectacular in this trend, who are women who are still dressing with dresses and stuff like that, but with this flair. Yes. of the classic style of our mothers and grandmothers and great-grandmothers. Exactly. Even. And so it's something that... Um, so now you're happy in this universe 
PT adopted you quite fast, right? Quickly. Yes, yes exactly. But it didn't hurt to have such a great arm piece as my husband. Yeah, of <laughs> course, stand next of course, to. of course. <laughs> so pretty much it was great yeah. to be able to be introduced in, to Pity in that way because mm. he knew a lot of people and of he course. knew where to go and hang out. And yeah. A lot of people did were very, very welcoming towards me. So it was very nice to be able to start pity off in that kind of way and be introduced to it in that way. Mm -hmm. So I really appreciated it. And yes, a couple of years went by before I returned again. Yes, but still. like all of us, because uh, <laughs> with uh, the, the, the sanitary crisis, it was a kind of a stop in the middle of mm -hmm. our road. Exactly. But you came back and I saw you on different magazines now. You're even modeling for magazine with three-piece suit, with double-breasted vest, with a... Is it new for you? It's something that you discover well, now? Or you, you used to do this in the past? Well, for the most part, I was a catalog. Well, still do catalog work. That's what I pre predominantly did. Okay. So suiting, it was far from ever being suiting coming into the picture. I of was course. wearing the most uncute outfits, I guess you can say. <laughs> and your and job was to make, to make it make cute. cute. Yes, of course. Of course. <laughs> and grandma clothes that weren't really cute grandma clothes, because I love grandma clothes. Yeah, of course. <laughs> the, the dresses and the feminine style that the women of 1940s and 50s would wear, hmm. but the types of styles that I would have to wear for catalog, it was most of the time not hmm. like that. Hmm. And then, of course, you have your fashion that was not really appealing to me as well. So that's another reason why I even started my whole persona of Angelique Noir. Yes. Because of my love for the old Hollywood fashion. So because I wasn't, I knew that there was something that was constantly shown over and over again and done so Absolutely. many times in yeah. fashion. But the thing that was a reoccurring thing was showing that it was black woman was not, was not a part of that. And I'm like, I know my grandmother, I know my great grandmother, of course. they dressed in these styles. Absolutely. They were not the only ones that were on this planet dressing in this that's style. Right, so that's right. I'm like, I need to go and pepper the internet with my image showing black women in this style as well. Hmm. And so that was like my little mission to be yeah. able to do so. That yeah. was but you did it well, I can tell you, because a lot of people notice it. And you know what? To be honest, I, di we didn't, even, I didn't even think about the color of your skin, because I said, you right now, when I think, okay, I've closed my eyes, in the 1930s, 40s, was with white women in films, you know? Exactly. And my, it didn't even come to my brain, because you, you're doing this with a lot of charm and very natural. It seems like you've always dressed like that, almost, to me. Yeah, it's, it's, it came naturally, because since a kid, I've watched old Hollywood movies constantly, mm. even in different languages, even if I didn't understand, I'm like, I just want to look at it because I <laughs> love the clothes. That's all I want to look at it for. Yes. And so that was what I grew up doing. So naturally I would gravitate towards the, that type of clothing. Mm. And so even seeing my husband and he was like my old Hollywood actor yeah. <laughs> yeah. in real life. So, yeah. so I was like, wow. <laughs> <laughs> and now you're living the dream for real. Exactly. And you live in France now. And are you happy in France? Oh, yes. Yes. Definitely. I would not. Well, I would go back to the United States only to visit. Yes. But as far as going back to live, I have zero interest in this it This is a very different mood, right? Even in the relationship with people, it's different. France is different. It I mean, is. Europe in general. Yes, is it is. But even another thing that stemmed from my childhood, since early, hmm. I've always wanted to travel. And of course, I felt like my soul was in Europe. Hmm. I'm like... I would love to be in France, but I'm like, just let me have my foot in Europe anywhere and I'll be happy <laughs> because I love the architecture. I love yes. different cultures and, and I love the things that I grew, grew up seeing when I was watching like these old Hollywood things. Cause yes. like the, just like even for the setup, I would see that kind of stuff in the movies reproduced. Mm. Yes. And so that was what matched what was in my mind. I'm like, mm. I need to be able to go where it actually like started. Mm. And so that was my drive. I have a question for you that many women who will look at this show, because we have a lot of women look at this show, because of course, Sonia is the co-producer and co-anchor of this show in English. But also because there's something we're very intriguing for the younger generation, even in the US, little by little, a little bit more in France and in Europe, but the English speaking area, is that okay? Obviously you, we can put anything on you, it will look good, okay? So the, God bless you with this kind <laughs> of physique, you. okay? But 
we know so a lot of women who may not be as spectacular as you are, and they would like to embrace this classic style feeling. Do you think it's possible for everybody? I do. I really do, because there's a lot of times that women, they think that they can't wear dresses in a feminine way. Mm -hmm. And I guess it's because it's been conditioned in society in general, especially American society, that the comfort clothing are jeans or sweats or leggings. And I'm like, yeah, that has a time and place for everything. But as far as you being able to feel feminine, you can be able to definitely go and resort to wearing a dress and still feel comfortable. I feel totally comfortable in dresses. I feel most comfortable in dresses, especially dresses with wide skirts because it's like I feel free hmm. and not like I'm having to pull up and fit <laughs> myself into some jeans. In the- <laughs> yeah, you're right. You're right. And so that's why I'm like, of course, like any body style, you can find dresses that are very complimentary. And so also being part of like the pinup community hmm. where we do emulate the 1940s and 50s yes. styles you do have women of all different sizes and looking spectacular wearing these dresses and putting themselves together and knowing how to do it right yeah and i just am blown away every single time that i see how these women just put themselves together in such a way yeah yeah this is beautiful and it's just a matter of a uh, well one more time ladies and gentlemen you know it's um We live in a world where we think we are trapped in some squares, you know, and we can't get out of these squares. Angelique is the living proof that is not true. First of all, she she was dreaming of coming to France. She met Guillaume Beau. <laughs> that's not <laughs> a, luck. That's a good luck. That's yeah, a lucky draw, you know. And then stop. You were interested in the Hollywood style of the 30s, 40s. You met Guillaume again. So that's a perfect draw. So I was very happy to speak with you, Angelique. Thank it was you. Such a Thank pleasure. you. And I th- think and I'm sure a lot of people will be in, inspired by what you do and uh, thank you very much for being part of our community. Thank you for having me for having us it was great. Thank you very much. <laughs> okay well that was a cool moment uh, with your wife she's very gentle she's a beautiful woman and I must say that she brings something uh, different in the plate in this pin-up world, classic style. And the fact that she's a black woman, she told us it is, it is very natural, And uh, but it's important for her to show to the world that it's not now this idea that this kind of clothing go to this kind of community, it's, this is what I like in this. And specifically in the sartorial movement, we don't really care because we have a lot of different tribes from all around the world. For example, tribes from Africa are coming. We call them tribes. Not because they are still doing no, 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 you know, no. tri- tribal thing. No, tribes means communities of people. Mm-hmm. And we have uh, people from Asia, people from Portugal, people from all around the world. Give us a few tribes that you like, the people. So, for example, Africa. They South Africa. South Africa. Yeah, a few I friends didn't know of mine. That. They're very cool. Uh, yeah. And their style is very interesting. Uh, I salute, for example, my friend Brian. He's a professional golfer there. Mm-hmm. And in Soweto, in Johannesburg, they are very cool. Mm-hmm. Uh, a few other ones, for example, yeah, Congo, you know, like... The Brazzaville, the, what we call the sapper. I don't yeah, know if, yeah. it's, if it's known in the U.S., the sappers, I suppose, yes. Yep. Maybe not as in much New as York. in France. In New in York, York especially, yeah. Yeah. So tell us a little bit about the, the, this movement. Is that the people who are from a poor extraction and they still put all their money in looking good? In their spirit, their, their money and their, their soul, pretty much. Ah, uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's like, how can I describe that? For you guys in America, it's like, it's almost like the low life and the low head. Do you know about them? Absolutely not. Uh, it's a movement, you know, that started in New York in 87, 88. Yes. With people from the projects. Yes. And very connected to hip hop again. Okay. And they would like still Ralph Lauren only. Oh, okay. Like big time. And they were showing the brown, right? Yeah. Literally. Yeah. yeah. And they would dress with Ralph Lauren only. Okay. Oh, wow. I didn't know that. So it's a mix of Ivy preppish, mm-hmm. but with this mix of street style, you know, like, uh, not street style, street wear. Yes. Sorry. And it's almost like this. You show labels, you show some class, because Ralph Lauren was like... Yes. You know... It was iconic for them, basically. Yeah. yeah. And it's, it's also like something that only the upper class would wear. Yes. So it was their way to... to, to 
to to get the revenge a little bit, absolutely, a little bit, yeah, uh, and to to be like, yeah, we can afford that too. Mm, we mm, can be a part of it. Mm. Same in, with yeah. supper. Yeah, in France, it's very connected to France because also there's the other side of the suppers that they wanted to. They live, you know, we speak French. They speak French there. The, the mm -hmm. part of Africa they were yeah. speaking French, and they have this idea of Paris was like the mecca for them to go. Oh, we want to dress like people yeah, yeah. in Paris, and they were literally trying to emulate. Paris, but you know what? They were doing something better than us. Yep. Because it means, it's that something of a sociological feeling for me, and that's a very good morality about that, is that it doesn't mean it, money can't buy everything. But on the contrary, if you have the courage, if you, if you have the, the spirit of it, you can do it without money. And this is what these people are showing the world. And of course, fortunately or unfortunately, I don't know what to say, I have no opinion on that, but I've been recuperated by Big Brown recently, who tried to surf on this way. It's good for them, because yeah. at last they're making money with their art, because they, they elevate this as a form of art for them. But at the same time, for me, maybe the spirit of it, but it's still alive in Africa. This is, so this is one tribe, we can show that you can't miss them. When they arrive at PT, it's like, wow, oh, yeah. it's full of colors, mm -hmm. it's full of joy, and it's full of exactly what we love. I'm happy that in this world of classic style, we have this mixing of cultures, because we're talking about the African or the, the tribe from Ivory Coast, Cameroon, etc., etc. But Paris you know, was magic for that. Exactly. Really? Exactly. And also in PT, we can meet people, for example, from Asia, right? Yeah, Korean. They... <laughs> There are no freaking And we joke. say in front they kick butts, literally. Yeah, yeah. You there know? are no freaking joke like yeah. Korean, Japanese, ooh, la, la. Yeah. they're master style. Yes. Why, and like, why? Why? Why are they so good? Because when they are like involved into something, yeah. they do it like they go the extra mile. Voilà. They, are like, they do it like crazy. So mm. details, you know, again fabrics, you know, like uh, denim, the yeah. service. Of course. Comes from Japan, yeah. you know. So many things like that, and plus culturally, uh, already in the 60s, they had like quite a few magazines dedicated to Ivy League or Preppy style. That's right. Like Popeye, you yeah. know, like... Yeah, of course. So they've been learning that for years. Yes. Why in France? Mm. Yeah. Uh, actually, I was buying myself, I can confess in front of you, ladies and gentlemen, I was buying Men's X and all this Absolutely. magazine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't speak one Global word of, of, yeah, yeah. of Japanese, Just pen magazine, but the pictures were amazing. Yeah, yeah. And those people, they have this kind of a, I think it's a culture, it's an attitude. They really like to go extremely far and extremely deep, so they're very refined, even if they don't Blow your mind like that, you know, you have to look a little bit at it. Wow, those guys are good. And then we have other tribes, for example, Portugal. I yep. was very imp impressed because there's a kind of a group of Portuguese yeah. people the who Portuguese are gathering. Dandies. You know them, right? Oh, yeah, they are good friends now. Yeah. They're very cool. And their style, again, is like, for me, a mix between France, Italy, yeah. but with more colors. Latin. Kind of, but still not African. Yeah, yeah, I understand. You know, so that's, yeah, but they're almost there. Hmm. And they are very kind. But very they're kind. very talented, like Polo yeah. from Porto, yeah. uh, Rui, uh, Farid, he lives in Angola, mm -hmm. you know, and uh, his wife, Soraya, like many, many people, yeah, many friends like that. We, we really like them. And even when, if we go north, because normally, okay, uh, uh, we are French. Uh, I mean, you know, it's nobody's something a little perfect. bit, nobody's perfect, of course, <laughs> but we French, we're a little more like a Latin feeling in yeah. our body, you know, but at the same time, when we go north, I always had the impression that the people are becoming more boring and a little bit more strong. This is not very, uh, a little bit, <laughs> but it's not very true. For example, we have crowds of from Scandinavia and PT women that are super sharp, right? Yeah, but again, they are, how can I say, <laughs> they are more like, not formal, but classic. Yes. Classic. Yes. It's a lot of beige, of white, mm. very, you know, simple, understated. Yes. That's the thing. You mean it's less, they express themselves a little bit less than we do, for example, and of course, uh, people from the South. Yeah. It's all about the fit. Yeah. You know, it's, it's more about that. Yeah. And, and when you go South, yeah. like Portugal, Italy, and you know, it's more, mm. not bright, but not shiny, but more like exuberant. Yes. And yeah, this is why, you know, we love this place. Pity Womo, yeah. So much. It's yeah. because, you know, you can find immediately what you like or what you don't like. Mm -hmm. And everybody has the right to express himself. Oh, yeah, absolutely. He says, you know, we speak a lot about 
diversity these days with people that come to PT Womo, you're going to see first row how this is some kind of me, it always makes me put me in a lot of it's a joyful attitude because you see everybody's expressed. Some people are really going insane and they're doing some crazy colors, mm -hmm. but it doesn't matter. No, because it's a, it's a place of free speech, yep. literally. Indeed. Because I consider dressing well as a, as a language, mm -hmm. and then you have the, the, the right to speech. And it's not only, as far as I know, Guillaume, it's not only at PT Womo itself, it's all over Florence. Yeah, that, that's the thing about PT. You know, you have like the fair, yeah in itself and mm -hmm. you have a lot of events you know dinners like in florence like uh uh let's talk about cartier and uh, not only men f menswear you know like that's the point like mm -hmm. a lot of events because pt is like again the mecca for menswear it's like the biggest fashion week and fashion fair dedicated to menswear mm -hmm. worldwide mm -hmm. twice a year for four days yeah. it's it now, um, in the past, I know it was at least 100,000 people mm -hmm. that go to PT only for this. Yes. Can you imagine? Yeah, of course I imagine. This, this is great. Four days, it's crazy. Yeah. So usually, you know, fashion weeks, when you think about fashion weeks, you think about Paris, New York, Milan, yes. and you, you think about people running everywhere, you know. And yeah, it's you know, ridiculous. PT is very, like, you know, cool. Yes. You can, you know, meet people. You can meet your idols the, the pd star mm -hmm. you can shake their hands you can take pictures you can talk mm. even if sometimes from for us it's quite difficult yeah. but uh, you can take time at least you mm -hmm. know and you don't feel this kind of fashion industry you know like, yeah 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 the yeah, way yeah, you yeah. would well, you know, well, like, everything we don't like but that's another subject what i like <laughs> also what i like also is that we had this experience with my beautiful wife sonia we were um, walking, you know, when we walk in Florence, for example, the people who have a, a pharmacy, who have a convenience store, who have a grocery shop, they know what pity is. Because, in my opinion, it can work also because it's in Florence. Because it's very important. The people here, first of all, it's an amazing city. And I have the impression it's something that's one of my research subjects. As a, not, I'm not a philosopher, I'm not a sociologist, I'm just a writer, but I'm searching a lot about that, has what beauty, what impact has beauty on the life of people? Mm -hmm. And how can you f put in your mind a more beautiful city in the world than Florence? And I think it has an impact on the way people behave. Even if they are pharmacists or doctors or simple people around the corner, they have an, it has an impact on how they look at the world. And when you walk in Florence, if you don't know Florence, ladies and gentlemen, don't come, there are too many people already, so we want to be, uh, you know, it's too crowded. No, I'm just joking. But you walk in the street, and you see every 10 meters, you see something, wow, look at this wall, look at this balcony, look at this church, look at this. It's, and so this is my theory, well, I might be the only one in the world who thinks that, but I think that beauty has a fundamental impact in, on the life of people. And this year, we, were, we make friends with a pharmacy. Do you remember? She was so cute. Mm -hmm. And then we were just buying some kind of whatever, things for shampoo, whatever it was. And then we make friends with the... They are very open, this Italian. And then we met her the day after, and then we, she was with her dogs. It's so <laughs> and so there's something I thought, I think really, that pity will not be pity womo if it were somewhere else in the world. I don't mind, I don't mean it will not be able to exist, yeah. but the Italian soul and the, the Flo beauty. Florentine soul and the beauty around makes it exhilarating. Now, I agree with you. Yeah. Uh, like the perfect example, like the beauty of my wife changed my life. Yeah, well, that's another story. But of course, and the beauty of mine changed my life too. But well, let's it's go a little simple. bit. Yeah, but let's be a little bit further than that. Even, okay, you, you have a lot of experience on that too. When you say to a young guy, okay, mm -hmm. try a jacket. Mm -hmm. Try a pocket square. Yeah. I didn't put a pocket square today, but I have a patch pocket, so it's against the rules. But try a little, and then I say, oh, are you sure I can do that? And then all of a sudden, it adds something. And I received messages, oh, you were right, Mr. Jacome. Uh, I got so many compliments and so many, and the way people are looking at me and the way I look at people change. There's an impact, right, of dressing well on your uh, life. I, I, I call this this extra touch of soul. Mm -hmm. Ce petit supplément d'âme. Yes, français. yes, yes. This extra touch of soul. It does change everything. Mm. Because you start, you know, think, uh, 
trying to improve your image, yes. the way you feel about it, yes. and the way people look at you. Yeah. So, you know, uh, you, you, you said something very right about sartorialism. Mm -hmm. it, for me, it's a common language too, mm -hmm. you know, and it's not only about how you communicate, it's about how people hear you. Mm -hmm. So in this case, it's how people see you. Yeah. And you, 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 you try your best to, you know, for them to welcome you the best way. So it's an exchange. Of course. It is a language. Literally, it's a living language. Um, ladies and gentlemen, you probably notice, and I'm sure a lot of you are asking themselves the question, when will he speak about his hat? <laughs> Because since the beginning, he said, oh, this guy is really good with hats. Even the way he's putting it a little bit on the side like that. Me, I don't wear hats. I know he disagrees with me, but me, I have long hair. And honestly, when I put on a hat, they look for my horse, you know, almost <laughs> of the time. And it's a little bit difficult and on top of that I had a very very wide head anyway maybe I, I started to try it a little bit more I'm going to be 60 soon I'm still a young boy so I have time for that but it's tell us about your hat so this is this is a fedora right mm -hmm. explain to us what are if some people wants to enter the magnificent world of hats uh, they have to buy let's say two or three different models explain yeah, to us yeah I would say like summer Panama yeah In um, white? It's, it's, yeah, it is it's white, mostly by white, definition. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And you can find some for almost nothing nowadays. Mm -hmm. So let's say around 100 bucks, mm -hmm. even 60. This, you know, and then you can even change the ribbon if you want. But, oh, you know, okay. white and blue. That's cool. That's and this one is a fedora. For, 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 for summer. Sorry, for winter. For winter, mm -hmm. brown. Yeah. Because for me, it's like very versatile. And you can wear this with almost everything? Voila, that's yeah. my point. Yeah. But you have to put it off. Because can you imagine a young guy in a college somewhere in the U.S. or even, you know, even in Europe and say, okay, oh, tomorrow I'm going to go to the college and I'm going to wear a hat. You have to be confident with yourself to oh, do so. Oh, yeah, big time. The thing is, if you're young, uh, you should go rather with a cap. But a tweed cap. Ah, you mean a cap? Yeah, okay. not the basic Not a golf cap. cap. No, no, no yeah. because everybody has a golf cap yeah. with a stupid logo on yeah, it in the America. I'm so, sorry, guys. I'm but talking that's about a... the Brooklyn, you know, like a like cap in tweed or something like that. Yeah, yeah. You know? Yeah, yeah. Like this, the series, uh, whatever, uh, not Boardwalk Empire, Peaky, the other one. Peaky, Peaky, Peaky Blinders. Peaky Blinders, yeah, yeah. you know? This is the, More yeah. like this, you start like that, then you start being confident enough, and then you can, you know, like try a hat yeah so fedora or panama yeah and for you this is the ultimate touch of a gentleman absolutely it's like you know the final like little uh, thing about you know like uh, uh, a regular outfit hmm. i cannot go like without hmm. it yeah. uh, without them actually and you know there's something which is linked to the hat I, it just come to my mind ah. it's a, it's a beautiful gesture because when you yeah you do this This is such a beautiful gesture of respect. Or you do this, if you need to pinch it, or you can do that if you really respect the person. You see, as we were saying, it's a grammar. Yeah. It's a language. And we are losing this, for example, on, on Paris and Gentlemen. Recently, we published an article from Valet Magazine, and it's called Final Resting Place, because there were, it's an incredible article. I will put you the link. And it's explaining that back in the years, you always had, in every restaurant, in every hotel, a place for the hat. Mm -hmm. Now it's impossible. You don't know where to put your hat because it's, it's almost dead. But thanks to people like you and a few others in the world, I think that hats has beautiful days ahead of them. And I okay, so. I promise you, I hope so. I'm going to try. Okay, cool. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, we, have a, we have a deal. Let, well, like, next PT Womo, I, I, I'm going to try to wear a Panama. Oh, okay. Oh, easy for you. But with this kind of blazer, for example, a yeah. cap. Could be cool. A uh, cap? Yeah, your British, <laughs> the British side of yours, you know. We want to encourage people. If you are considering going to PT, uh, be aware of the fact that PT has a, the, 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 the arms open for you, no problem. But I will ask uh, Guillaume a few questions so that you, you really understand a little bit more. He will give us a few tricks and the keys of this magnificent event. So, for example... Where do you go when the fair is closed at five o'clock, whatever, it's five o'clock, something like that? Where is the place where you can meet a lot of well-dressed people who don't dislike to party generally after? What are the key places in Florence where you should go to meet some brothers and sisters? You know it pretty well. Yes, the, the, but the, I, I ask you because that's my yeah, job. Yeah, yeah, great. Uh, true. Uh, Café Gili. Gili. 
uh, Piazza della Repubblica, mm -hmm. like the Republic Square, pretty yeah. much. It's like in the yeah, downtown, in the core of, of Florence. Yes. And around like 10-ish, like 10 p.m., everybody goes there. Yeah. So you can meet almost everybody. Mm. So if you want to meet, I don't know, uh, you, mm. Sonia, Angel, uh, I don't know, Franco, whatever. Yeah, you know, like, the, all the oh, friends, yeah. all that were brothers. At and, some yeah. point, you will see them there. Yeah. Cafe Gili. Mm. G I -L, L I. Yes, Gili, fantastic place. And I just said a word, it just came to my mind. And it's crazy because, you see, when you think about fashion, people hate each other in fashion normally. They want to be better than the other. They want to have a better show than the other. They want to have the first row. And when you are second row, uh, in PT, we, we often say brother mm -hmm. and sister. It's mm -hmm. quite off. It's, it's usual, right, to say it's like a family meeting. It's a community. Yeah. Yeah. So it's very different. So remember that the Gili Cafe in France is crazy good. And you will see it's exhilarating. It's a bit messy. It's a mess because there's a lot of yeah. people, yeah. but it's a lot of fun all the time. And also what is interesting is that there are some key streets in Florence where it's good to make pictures in, right? Mm -hmm. This is because the background is incredible. Do you have a few places to oh share my, with us? So many like, wow. Uh, huh. Around uh, the Duomo, I suppose. No. Not really. It's more for tourists, it's right? It's too packed. Yes. It's beautiful. Yeah. But if you have to go there, go there around midnight. Mm. So it's not that packed and you can like embrace the, f the fabulousness. I don't know if the, 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 the word is correct, but mm -hmm. correct me, baby, if I'm wrong. The, the greatness, the greatness. Yeah, the greatness. Yeah. yeah. Uh, the fabulousness is a new word you yeah. invented, but the, it's, uh, we about, understand what you mean. Yeah. About Duomo. Yeah. Because it's... Just fantastic. It's, mm -hmm. it's, yeah, early, very early in the morning, the Duomo. But me, I would go to Forte Belvedere. Mm -hmm. Have you ever been there? No. So it's like on, on top of Florence, mm -hmm. and then you can enjoy the whole view. Mm. We, we slept beautiful. at Villa Cora one day. Is that around to Villa Cora? There's no. A beautiful, no, it's another no, side. Yeah, yeah. This is like, uh, I, I know uh, what you're talking about. No, no, no. It's more like uh, close to Via uh, de Marmi. Okay. So you have like a, a, a big incline. You have to walk. Mm. It's like oh, I would say like one mile away from from Gili. Mm -hmm. So you just need to walk and to go there. It's beautiful. Okay. Really beautiful. Okay. What else? What are so many? Like go, go to Palazzo Pitti. Mm. Just that. Uh, so people don't make confusion. Palazzo Pitti is not where Pitti Uomo is because originally it was at Palazzo Pitti. Uh, but, yeah. but now it's in Fortezza da Basso, which is a more like a congress center, but with old stones. It's also very beautiful. And Palazzo Pitti, we made the mistake with Sonia one, one, one year. We said, ah, oh, we are at Palazzo Pitti. We are at Pitti Uomo. No, it's not exactly the same place. No, it's no. inside. The, it's the heart of the city, literally. The, 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 the name, the yeah. Pitti name yeah. comes from... Yeah. This palazzo, because in the 90s, mm. you know, like in the, the 80s, sorry, you know, like Pitti Uomo would take place there. Yeah. Now it's at the Fortezza da Basso, mm -hmm. which is close next to the train station. Exactly. Voilà. Yeah, Maria Novella, whatever. Maria Novella. This is the name of the train station. Ah, Santa Maria Novella. Santa Maria Novella. <laughs> I was missing Santa, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. So another, well, maybe do you have another advice for the people who say, I, I'm going to show up at Pity? What, what, what do I do? Is, is it complicated to, to mix with the people. We already said that, but I want to insist on that because a lot of people said that can be impressive. It's kind of impressive at the beginning, right? Yeah, it can be. Yeah. I remember my first time. You yeah, know, me like too. We were together, by the way. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. we met there. But before, yes. you know, me, uh, it, it was a special time. I took the bus, yeah. 12 hours. It was kind of old school, you know? Like, yeah. So, uh, because you were broke like I yeah, were. Yeah, exactly. Uh, we were broke, yeah, exactly. both of us, yeah. But, and so I had to do this and uh, I knew nobody and it was, wow, okay, they're all there. So, you know, I challenged myself. I was like the best out I remember you, there. how do you call the canotier in English? Boater. Oh, yeah, the, the boater. He was yeah. wearing a boater. Mm. I'm going to look with Sonia. We have to... To deep down, I'm pretty sure we still have a picture of that. With uh, yeah, 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 yeah. I remember it was Justin Fitzpatrick with me. Yeah, uh, oh, yeah. Justin. Exactly, Justin was here. Uh, I remember that. Yeah, and then we were here, and then you were here with your boater. Mm -hmm. Oh <laughs> yeah. Peacocking, you remember that? Mm -hmm. That was fun. You see, Peter Wobo is not only about all the clothing, it's also an atmosphere. Mm -hmm. There's something, and we are all looking forward to go back here. And what is interesting for us now is that 
it's more open than it used to be to the thing. And I think we can encourage people to discover this yeah, world it's because it's a world of... It's not only about money and clothes and competition. It's more about a lifestyle. Lifestyle, literally. emulation. Yes. Because you can learn a lot. Too. Yes. Uh, people are very friendly. That's just true, hmm. uh, which is pretty rare, you know, especially for like such a big fashion fair, hmm. because it can be business too. It can. But still, yeah. it's very friendly. Yeah, it is. It This is, is amazing. I, I agree with you. So anyway, ladies and gentlemen, we hope it was interesting for you. If you want to follow Guillaume, you look at his Instagram. Uh, uh, we're going to put all the links. It's Guy Bo on, on, on Instagram. You get Angelique Noir, which is his wife. We're going to put all the links in the description. Please Thank follow you. these people because they deserve it. And they will bring you inspiration in your life. How to be at your best. How to really um, find your own style. Because at the end of the day, it is what it is all about. You know, we are not here to teach anything to the people. We are here to share the fact that, well, okay, we just were a little bit like it was like a, like a confession because we we're just saying to you in 2014 we were both broke, and that was true. You know, because we decided to make this our job and to really invest ourselves in this track. And at the beginning in 2014, there was a very beginning, Instagram was barely created. You were on Facebook, me too. And we had, well, okay, us who were working on, our first book was not even written. So it means that we decided uh, as a couple, you were alone and then you met Angelique later. But as couples, we decided that's our job. You know, we want to do that. And it, it's just to show you that I don't want to preach that everything is possible. You have to believe oh, yeah, in your dream yeah. and blah, 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 and blah, blah, blah. But that's a fact. If you put an effort in the way you dress, in the way you behave, in the way you look at the world, because the world can be a dirty place. It depends on of what, how you look at it, how you envision it, and how you share with others the thing you are passionate about. And there's one thing that, for me, is summing up all the thing around pity is passion. And when you have the passion, everything is possible, as always. Thank you very much, Guillaume, I do for being you, our man. guest. We're very honored to have you at our table. Thank you. And we give you, ladies and gentlemen, an appointment to the next edition of Sotoyo Talks. Bye-bye. Be good people. Please, and dress up. Bye.